What's going on guys, welcome to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be tackling the electric truck. Now, the IRS system in the rear of the truck is going to be Tesla, and it's going to completely retain the Tesla components. But for the front, we have to get a little bit more creative. Imagination. We're going to have to do an all-wheel drive system in this truck. Now, for our inspiration, if you will, we're going to be using a Corvette IFS. And what that is, is an independent front suspension. What we have here is a C6 Corvette, similar to what we are going to be using in the front of the electric truck. This has equal wishbone suspension. It's got a nice subframe cradle in the front. It's gonna make it a little simpler for us to situate our electric motor up front. We plan on using two Tesla motors as we talked about in the last video. What we have on the bench right now is our front K member out of a C5. This is all aluminum, it's nice and lightweight. And we have two points right here for the motor mounts. These are gonna act as our engine mounts for the actual electric motor is gonna hang back here. But the first thing we have to do in order to get to that point is we're gonna make a partial fixture. Right now it's up on two by fours as you can see on the bench. This is gonna be what's called a sub structure. Using this one inch pipe, we're gonna use these factory points and hover this K member above the table so that we can get underneath it, get to the bolts, be able to figure out how we're gonna situate the electric motor inside of here. On the bench, we're gonna be lining up the suspension system. We're gonna be lining up all the drive line. We're gonna basically do all the measurements, all of the figuring out on the bench before we go to the chassis table. So what we have to do first is we have to cut some washers on our plasma table and some plates. So Polly over here is cutting up on our plasma table. We got some eighth inch material loaded up. This is a little bit more stout than what we would normally use. This is gonna give us the ability to make some really nice brackets. Now for the motor mounts for the Tesla motor, we're gonna use quarter inch material. But for right now, we're gonna make our motor mount base plates out of this eighth inch stuff. So here's we got the plate right there. Nice. So Polly's making these plates, guys. This is gonna act as our point where we can start welding stuff off of. And if we head over to our actual Tesla motor, you can see there's three points from the factory where they have this thing hooked up. This is a massive unit. We have this ear, this ear, and this ear. And we're gonna have to make something for over here to hold this side up too. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give ourselves the ability to be able to make some fixturing and some brackets to be able to bolt that in because our subframe is made out of aluminum. So we have our hardware all set up now so we can start connecting our dots. Polly cut some washers on our plasma table out of this eighth inch material, softened up these bolts so that we can actually fit inside the end of this pipe. And we'll end up welding this actually in place. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna bolt these up and then we'll take a measurement from the washer to the table. Once we have all this welded up, we can remove these two by fours and this thing will sit here and just float over top the table. That's gonna allow us to be able to get underneath, like I said before, and it's also gonna let us set our suspension up, get some droop in it. All right, so our subframe jig is starting to take shape. As you can see, these one inch dowels are actually gonna get welded to the table. I'm only gonna tack weld it in a couple different corners. This is gonna basically hold this thing in position. We have one motor mount plate cut, and it's looking pretty good. Made out of quarter inch material, so it'll be nice and strong. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna measure for the rears and get those cut and welded up, and then we'll tack this whole thing in place and knock these boards out of the way. Well, that was fun. No one told me electric motors are extremely heavy. So we almost have this Tesla motor situated. The only hiccup is it's a little wider than a V8. As you can see, we have our inverter right here and our electric motor. It's kind of similar to a front wheel drive setup where your transfer case and your engine is offset. So ideally, I'd like to stick this assembly centered in this K member. If I can get that accomplished, then the suspension, everything is gonna jive perfectly. I speak jive. Oh, good. The only issue is that this inverter is attached to this unit. And the reason why Tesla does that is that when they go ahead and do some manufacturing and they put the whole drive system in the back of the car, they do it kind of like this. 
This is a Tesla IRS without all the suspension and everything. So this is the subframe. If you were gonna make an electric car yourself and you had an inverter, you're gonna put that thing somewhere else in the car. Tesla decided to bolt their inverter to the side of this motor. We need to change that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the inverter for now. I'm gonna cap off the coolant lines because there's some coolant that flows through here to keep everything nice and cool. And then we're gonna be able to shift this entire assembly over and use all of our tabs that Polly cut on the plasma table to start connecting the dots to hang this motor inside this subframe cradle. What this is also gonna do, it's gonna allow us to be able to keep the weight nice and low inside of the front of the vehicle. This thing is really heavy, it's not light at all. I can completely spin this thing and have the inverter and the motor hanging over these mounting points. It's still gonna be kind of wonky. So I have to shift this over, slide it down, and then it's gonna keep the center of gravity nice and low. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the inverter off now and see what we can do. Drop that shit. Now that we have our inverters removed, we're going to basically cap this end of the motor. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this big old boy right here, I'm gonna cut it down to an inch and an eighth, and we went ahead and cut ourselves a disc on the plasma table. What this is gonna do is pop right in there, like so, nice and tight, and we're gonna weld it on the front side. Do a nice blend, and this will be a cap for our Tesla unit. What we have to still do is we have to make adapters for these water jackets. This is what flows coolant from the motor into the inverter and then back out. So we'll end up making a bolt pattern, go into a bar fitting, and then we'll just punch three holes in this plate with some nice rubber around it or something like that to be able to run our lines through. But for now, I really wanna get this motor situated, so I'm gonna cap it with this guy first, and then we'll start working on our motor mounts. I'm gonna put the lower control arm on now. I'm gonna put on the spindle, and then I'm gonna put the upper control arm in the position where the spindle is nice and square. So I'm gonna have to square that off to the table. And then once I have all that set, then I'm gonna be able to figure out where I'm gonna put my frame rail here to be able to mount in the upper control arm. Once I have that figured out, the suspension kind of set where I want it to be, then I can start connecting the dots. I'm hoping it can kind of sit flat like this. I like this weight being as low as possible in the vehicle so that it'll corner better, it'll just drive better. In a Tesla, this thing is almost like a couple inches off the ground, so it's really low in the car. So we're trying to emulate that as best we can. So we go ahead and put the suspension on now, and then we'll be able to figure out our frame rails and then situate our motor mounts. All right, we're almost set on the front suspension for our electric truck. Our power by max lower control arms are installed. We have our spindles in. Our upper control arms are now yet to be installed. So what we have to do is, we have this nice one by one bar that's simulating where the steering rack's gonna go. And we use that to actually square up the spindles, make sure they're nice and straight and where they need to be. This dimension right here is kind of a question mark. Thankfully, I have a C6 here. So we're gonna head outside right now, and take some measurements see what we have to do for these frame rails, how far they need to be out in order to make sure that this guy is exactly where it needs to be in relation to the spindle. Otherwise the suspension's gonna be all janky. So let's go take a walk outside. C6 Corvette, C5 Corvette, essentially the same. One's got fixed headlights, one's got pop-up headlights. The good thing for us is that the suspension is identical and as you can see, our lower control arm and upper control arm are offset. The upper control arm is out significantly from where it bolts to there. So what I have to figure out is how far out that upper control arm is from the lower control arm. As soon as I figure that out, then it's gonna be easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. To get my top frame rails. So the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna measure the center point on my upper control arm and my lower control arm, which is 11 inches. So this control arm is completely flat. So it's simulated on the bench right now, completely flat. 
just like it would be loaded on the ground. So, my lower control on right now is at five degrees sitting on the ground. And my upper control arm is at five degrees. So they're square. So now that I have this point fixed area on the bench, it looks like I have to come out a significant amount. All right, time to go back inside. So our front suspension is finally mocked up. We're ready to start making our upper frame rails. So the upper frame rail is gonna start on this point, come straight across, and then we're gonna build out some brackets and some ability to be able to bolt this upper control arm. Right now, this is pretty much perched in the measurement of the C6 that we measured earlier, 11 inches from this center line to this center line. This is on five degrees, that's zeroed out. So that's exactly how it is in the Corvette. This bar right here is giving us all of our dimensions our spindles are nice and square these are all clamped in nice so now what i want to do is i'm going to build two frame rails they're going to go right here and then we're going to connect the dots to this lower guy right here we measured from this face back it's two feet so i'm going to cut two two footers and what we're using for our frame rails is two by four with quarter wall and here's a stick of it right here pretty beefy material should be nice and stout for the chassis so we're gonna cut two foot sections and we're gonna actually cut back on a 45 to be able to get to the bolt hole. So let's go ahead and cut this part first and then we'll go from there. All right, so our upper control arm mounts are in place. What we have to do is just make some gussets now in order to make sure these things are nice and strong. So we're gonna triangulate on the inside here. So stop this from bending. This is a nice piece of eighth inch 90. Everything's pretty much set. Once I finish putting the gussets in on these upper control arms, we can start situating the electric motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these up right now. I'm gonna cut some gussets on the plasma table for the upper and lower, and then we can final bolt all this together and start lining up our motor. But right now our frame rails are in place. Lower frame rail mounts are in place. Everything's just tacked together right now and we're tacked to the table over there. So we'll be able to do final weld as soon as everything else is kind of situated. This is pretty much where the front end of the truck's gonna be up until where we start doing some steering and doing some other gussets and stuff like that, but that's for a later episode. So for right now, we're just gonna make some final gussets for these upper control arms and start getting our electric motor situated in this front K member. the drift truck is done the c5 corvette suspension fits great we have our subframe in place electric motor is mocked up on the next episode guys we're going to throw the steering system in the front of this thing and be able to mock up the uh, electric motor to the point where we're going to be able to actually weld up the tabs and get this thing completely fixed in this chassis once that's all set then we're going to move to the actual chassis fixture the actual jig table we're going to put it in there and start laying out the entire truck so thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.